Antony would always have two years on him, and six on Colin. And as for Daphne, well, besides the fact that she was a girl, the horror, she'd known father a full eight years less than he had, and, he liked to remind himself, always would. Edmund Bridgerton was, quite simply, the very centre of Antony's world. He was tall, his shoulders were broad, and he could ride a horse as if he'd been born in the saddle. He always knew the answers to arithmetic questions, even when the tutor didn't. He saw no reason why his sons should not have a treehouse, and then he went and built it himself, and his laugh was the sort that warmed a body from the inside out. Edmund taught Antony how to ride. He taught Antony how to shoot. He taught him to swim. He took him off to Eton himself, rather than sending him in a carriage with servants, as most of Antony's future friends arrived, and when he saw Antony glancing nervously about the school that would become his new home, he had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with his eldest son, assuring him that everything would be all right. And it was. Antony knew it would be. His father, after all, never lied. Antony loved his mother. Hell, he'd probably bite off his own arm if it meant keeping her safe and well. But growing up, everything he did, every accomplishment, every goal, every single hope and dream, it was all for his father. And then one day, everything changed. It was funny, he reflected later, how one's life could alter in an instant, how one minute everything could be a certain way, and the next it's simply not. It happened when Antony was eighteen, home for the summer, and preparing for his first year at Oxford. He was to belong to All Souls College, as his father had before him, and his life was as bright and dazzling as any eighteen-year-old had a right to enjoy. He had discovered women, and, perhaps more splendidly, they had discovered him. His parents were still happily reproducing, having added Eloise, Francesca, and Gregory to the family, and Antony did his best not to roll his eyes when he passed his mother in the hall, pregnant with her eighth child. It was all a bit unseemly, in Antony's opinion, having children at their age, but he kept his opinions to himself. Who was he to doubt Edmund's wisdom? Maybe he, too, would want more children at the advanced age of thirty-eight. When Antony found out, it was late afternoon. He was returning from a long and bruising ride with Benedict, and had just pushed through the front door of Aubrey Hall, the ancestral home of the Bridgertons, when he saw his ten-year-old sister sitting on the floor. Benedict was still in the stables, having lost some silly bet with Antony, the terms of which required him to rub down both horses. Antony stopped short when he saw Daphne. It was odd enough that his sister was sitting in the middle of the floor in the main hall. It was even more odd that she was crying. Daphne never cried. Daff, he said hesitantly, too young to know what to do with a crying female, and wondering if he'd ever learn. What? But before he could finish his question, Daphne lifted her head, and the shattering heartbreak in her large brown eyes cut through him like a knife. He stumbled back a step, knowing something was wrong, terribly wrong. He's dead, Daphne whispered. Papa is dead. For a moment, Antony was sure he'd misheard. His father couldn't be dead. Other people died young, like Uncle Hugo. But Uncle Hugo had been small and frail. Well, at least smaller and frailer than Edmund. You're wrong, he told Daphne. You must be wrong. She shook her head. Eloise told me he was... It was... Antony knew he shouldn't shake his sister while she sobbed, but he couldn't help himself. It was what, Daphne? A bee, she whispered. He was stung by a bee. For a moment, Antony could do nothing but stare at her. Finally, his voice hoarse and barely recognisable, he said, A man doesn't die from a bee sting, Daphne. She said nothing, just sat there on the floor, her throat working convulsively as she tried to control her tears. He's been stung before.